the first time that happened. Uh, I thought about the first time I got an award. I thought about the first time I called the just dial guy and I said, can you give me a blow job? That's a different story. <laughs> I'm shaking when I think of it already. I have this pair of needles. You know, not the stitching sort of needle, but the sort of needle that punctures your skin and violates your whole being sort of needle. So every single time I had to go to a doctor to get an injection, I would black out. Like every single time. I blacked out standing, looking at him giving an injection to somebody else. That's how bad my pair of needles was. And I managed with homeopathy for a really long time because it's easy, you eat sugar pills and you're all okay. <laughs> so, uh, but then uh, there was this one time I had to go to the doctor. I was a big D. It was a surgery. And um, I managed going to him and I had this huge crush on this doctor. That's like a whole different story. He's a 50 something, amazingly awesome, dimply, charming, bedside manner, totally like happy, <laughs> sort of doctor. I still shake and smile when I think of him. So, um, he was being so charming and nice and I said, the only worry I have talked about the surgery is that damn thing that they put on your hand. He said, oh, that's called a butterfly. I said, how ironic. I mean, like butterflies are happy, you know, floating beings and here you are calling something that's intravenous and poked into your hand and stuck to you for like, I don't know how long. A butterfly. So uh, he said, don't worry. As long as you're okay and you don't need IV, I'll ensure that it's taken off right away. I said, all right. Uh, I was given an OT tour the day before the surgery happened. They took me in, uh, they plugged me in, and then the anesthesiologist started explaining what they were going to do. It was going to be a spinal block anesthesia. It was going to be a needle. So I said, oh my god, first they're going to put the butterfly, then they're going to put the needle in my back, between my vertebrae, into my bones, into my spinal cord. <laughs> Too much of <laughs> drama happening. So I was like, uh, and unfortunately, they had me plugged into this machine. So I'm, I'm like all swag. I'm like, yeah. Surgery, come on, like, and then the pulse meter is going. She's like, Are you nervous? I'm like, No, I'm fine. Like, yeah, I'm fine. My husband's in the room and he's laughing because he knows that I'm just here And then the next day, they wheel me into the OT against my wishes because I said, I walk, it's just like the OT. Like, no, no, you're a patient, you have to be wheeled in. I get wheeled in, and there's this Malu nurse. Now, how common is that? I mean, which nurse is not <laughs> So, so by the time we have a conversation, and he's found out where I am from, and he's spoken to me in our mother tongue, common mother tongue, the butterfly's in, and I'm ready. I'm like, come on, baby, hack me open. I'm all like, all set. And then I remember, oh shit, the spinal block's gonna happen. So I go into the OT, and then the same Malu nurse. He sort of makes my head hit my knees and they poke me in the back. So it's like a very grating feeling because there's a needle going through your bone. So you actually feel it. And then they tap me on my feet. They're checking if the anesthesia is taken in. So it's a frontal abdominal surgery. And uh, I'm like all swag. I'm like, yeah, I'm okay. And then the doctor scrubs in. He walks in. He's like, what are you doing with glasses on? And I'm like, uh, yeah, well, I want to see what happens because it's a local anesthesia surgery. And he's like, it's okay, it suits you, and I'm smiling. I'm smiling on the operating table, <laughs> looking at her. And he's like, no, don't worry, you'll be fine. And um, so the first thing he says, is, you'll feel a slight unzipped feeling on the left side. I'm going to cut through you. I say, okay. And he hacks through. It's just like an unzipped feeling. There's no feeling. And then he takes whatever he's hacking with and cuts on the right side. And the right side has not taken on the anesthesia. Okay. And I can feel it hack through, but you're straight jacketed. They literally straight jacket you onto the chair. You can't move, you can't do it. jack shit about it. So I'm like, oh my god, I can feel you hack through me. And then, because he's already cut me one, on one side, and the other cut is already halfway through, he doesn't wait. The anesthesiologist has already sent in the anesthesia, but he goes ahead and cuts anyway. So by the time the anesthesia soaks in, I'm out. And I don't hear her first cry. I don't see her face. I don't know what's happening, but it's a girl. And he tells me it's a girl, and I've always wanted a girl. I've always wanted a girl baby. I have dreams of a girl baby. And the minute he says that, I'm like, she's going to be a belly dancer. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then my aunt says, belly dancer, you could think of astronaut. I'm like, I'm still like high with the anesthesia. They gave me general for heaven's sake. 
but she's all okay and then the doctor says this and I say I'm going to jump off from here and hug you and he's like I'm going to hold you to that shy me now so they wheel me out at I think 10:30 she was born at 9:12 and I go out and I see her and and she's Anika now she's two and a half years old that story ends there <laughs>